Hey guys! Um, okay, so in this video, I'm going to start talking about how to approach part D of PA3. Um, so that's the part with the cars. So PA3, part D. Okay, so um, the spec is really long, but you guys should read it all. But at a very high, high level, we have this road. And the road is an array, basically. And then you have cars. And cars can come in from one side, or they can come in from the other side. OK? Um, and you might have several cars wanting to come in from either side. And cars might want to go faster uh, or slower than the other cars, OK? So there's a whole lot of requirements, but they basically boil down to no crashes. You don't want cars to crash. And you want to be able to do this without modifying the car speed. Or, or the delay, which are the same thing. So you're not allowed, like in previous exercises, you had to modify the delay to make the cars like wait kind of for each other, like you made them smaller and bigger to make the cars go a certain way. You are not allowed to do that anymore. The delays are given, and cars need to not crash. This is a huge assignment. Um, it's probably the hardest out of the four, and it's definitely a lot harder than PA2 and PA1. So. The best thing you can probably do is break it down. So I like to break it down in three parts. And that's just how I do it. You guys can break it down however you want. But this is how the videos are going to go. So for the first part, you should be able to handle cars going in a single direction. Cars going in one direction. OK? So either all going east or all west. Okay, But all cars just go in one direction, and they don't crash into each other. Now, how could they crash into each other if they're all going in the same direction? Well, if the car behind another car goes faster, right, if this guy right here is going faster than this guy right here, then they'll, they'll crash. And so that's what we want to avoid in this first part. Okay? The second part is to handle cars going in opposite directions. So some want to go east, and some want to go west. This part is really hard, so I break it down even further into two parts. First, you want to handle cars waiting on a single side. Right, so for example, I have five cars going east, and those five cars are already on the road, and then I have two cars that get there that want to go west. And so those two cars that just got there have to wait for all the east cars to exit before they can go. Um, so basically, wait for cars on the road to exit. Okay? And then the, the second part is to handle cars waiting on both sides. And this is a, one of the hardest parts of the assignment. OK? And how you deal with this is they have to take turns entering the road. And I'll talk more about what that means later, when I get to that. But basically, if you have like cars waiting on the west side and cars waiting on the east side, one car from the west goes, and then one car from the east goes, and then one car from the west goes, and then one car from the east goes. And this is a pain to do. <laughs> um, but that's what the spec wants us to do. So there's that. And then finally, the third part is to handle corner cases. 
And there are a lot of corner cases to this assignment. I'll talk about two specific ones. Now you might be wondering at this point, like, there's, this breaking down is good, but how do I control, like, how do I make all the cars go in one direction, or, like, make cars go in one direction and then have cars waiting on the other side? So how you control all this is with the delays. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk again more about that when we get to, to the parts, particularly with the opposite sides. With the single side, it's easy. You just make them all go um, east, and then you make the one at the front, so the one with the smallest delay gets to enter first, and make that really slow, and make the ones behind that really fast. So, so that's pretty straightforward to do. Okay, so in this video, we're talking about part one, which is cars all go in the same direction. So, basically, again, we have a road, and we're going to be drawing this road a lot. And you have a car here. And that car wants to f go forward, and it needs to know if it can. And this, this kind of thinking will, will be good for all three parts. Like, a car needs to proceed, either in the road or entering the road or something like that. Um, and it wants to know if it can, it can, can it proceed, and think about what conditions would let it proceed and what conditions wouldn't. So in this case, when can the car not go? Well, the car can, shouldn't go when there is a car there, right? And otherwise it can go. So then one way to think about this is that positions on a road can only be occupied by one car at a time. And that makes sense, right? You can't have two cars in the same position on the road. Okay, so how do you go about implementing that? Now some of you might already have um, an idea of how to do this, but if you go to exercise D, which I don't remember the file name, but I think it's um, PA3D.C. You go here, you will see a lovely drive road method. And this is the method you're going to be modifying mostly. Let's understand what this method is. It takes in a C, it takes in a from, and it takes in an MPH. So this here is the car's speed, this here is the car's ID. And this here is east or west, right, where they're coming from. Okay. And this method takes care of getting a car from the beginning to the end of the road. So when they call drive road, they drive through the whole road. And because they drive through the whole road, um, there's some stuff. In the middle, there's a loop. And this loop its job is to go through the whole road. Go through all positions in the road. And this part is all given to you. The code the code I'm writing is all already there. I'm just explaining what it's doing. Okay? And then inside this loop, it calculates P, which is a car's current position. And it calculates NP, which is a car's next position. And it does this based on the, the from, right? If it's from the east, then it's going to go backwards, or and it's in the west, it's going to go forward, something like that. Um, so it's either like 1 through 10 or 10, 9, or 10 through 1, depending on where it's coming from. And this part is already done for you. The code is there. I encourage you to print them. I greatly, greatly encourage you to print these out to see what they are. Like, have one car just going east and have one car just going w west in, in two separate examples so that they don't crash. And then print what those two things are so that you understand what to do with them. That's like massive hint. Print P and NP. 
for cars going east and cars going west because it, it's kind of interesting how they work okay and then um, once you've calculated P and MP this method also calls a proceed road and this proceed road what it does is it takes you from position P to position NP okay so um, let's see if I can do colors maybe yes okay at this point in our program you are or a car is in position P and you want to enter position NP okay and that makes sense right you, you haven't yet entered because you haven't called proceed road so you're you're in position P which is your current position and you want to enter position NP right before you call proceed road okay and then at this so right before you call proceed road after you call proceed road you have entered so you now are in position NP and this means obviously because a car can only be in a single position at a time that you have left position P okay um, so then think about how you need to change or what you need to add to drive road so cars wait um, and don't crash when there's when there's a car occupying a position they want to enter okay and as you all might have guessed already the big idea here is to think about how to use semaphores and if you don't quite get semaphores I encourage you to watch the video on semaphores um, and if you have further questions feel free to post on Piazza or to come to, to tutor hours and we can help you with that okay but the key idea here is remember they are like guards and they're guarding a room, right? And they only let like a certain number of people into that room at the same time. That's the kind of like the high level overview of how semaphores work, what they were. Okay. Lastly, some notes about semaphores. Particular to this assignment. It's okay to use more than one. A lot of students like freak out and think they can only use a single semaphore. That is not the case. You are totally, totally allowed to use as many as you need, as long as it's not more than max sems, and max sems is something ridiculous like a hundred or a thousand or I don't remember. Max sems is huge, so you're not going to run out of semaphores. So you can use more than one semaphore in this assignment. You don't have to do just one. The other big thing is think about what you need to initialize them to what that initial value needs to be if you don't know again I encourage you to watch that video because it explains what the different initial values mean so should you initialize them to 1 should you initialize them to 0 should you initialize them to some number that is greater than 1 okay think about that and the last but most important point is make sure they work uh, make sure they work. Again, this is super important. A lot of students like go straight to part like half code part B, go straight to part D, 
and their semaphore, they didn't test their semaphores, and then their part D is a mess, and it's a pain to debug, and then they find out that the whole problem was that they didn't do wait, or they didn't do signal right. Okay? So how do you make sure that they work? Well, a couple things you want to make sure they can do. They should be able, your semaphores, I mean, they should be able to handle um, multiple processes waiting on them, right? Not just a single one. Multiple should be able to wait on a single semaphore. And then a program should be able to have more than a single semaphore. Some implementations that students do, like, it only works with a single semaphore, and that's all they test, and so it seems like they work, but then when they test two or three, the whole thing breaks. So make sure you can have more than one semaphore in your program. Even if you don't use more than one for PA, uh, 3D, for part D, for the cars part, um, we're going to test semaphores separately. So make sure that you can handle more than one, and make sure that you can handle multiple processes on a single semaphore. Okay. And I think that is all you need to get started on part D. Um, so be sure to do the first part, cars going all in one direction, and then get started on the cars going on the opposite directions, because it is really very tricky. And you want to get that done as soon as you can. Okay.